In the previous video, when we looked at the summing finite geometric progressions, the last example we gave was was this uh, one here, which had first term 1 and common ratio 1 half, and we found the sum of the first 10 terms. I mentioned that if you sum this to infinity, you would get the number 2. And let's just think about what we mean by summing it to infinity. So I'm saying actually if I do 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, plus a 32nd, etc., um, and, and see what happens. Now, um, so if we imagine a number line that starts at 0, and I'm going to add on, I'm going to keep on adding these terms on, so I'm going to get, so I start with 1, that takes me to 1. When I do 1 plus a half, I add on another half, and that takes me to, to 1 and a half. And then I add on a quarter, and I get to 1 and 3 quarters, and I add on an 8, and I get to 1 and 7 eighths. And you can see that every time I add on an extra term in here, the next one, I'm adding on a 16th, so I'm going to get, so at the moment I'm 1 eighth away from 2, which is somewhere over here. Um, scale's gone a bit wrong, but you get the point. Uh, you know, and I'll add in 1 and 15 sixteenths, and then and now I'm 1 sixteenth away, so I add on a 32nd, and I get half as way again. So each time I keep adding on a half of the distance from where I currently am to 2. and uh, so I never quite get to 2. I mean, you can sort of imagine if we keep adding on terms in this sequence, we're getting closer and closer to 2. And that's what it means for the sum of the infinite geometric progression to be 2. It's not that we ever actually get there, but but the further we go down the sequence, the closer we, we get to 2. And I can get as close as I like to 2. I could get within a billionth of 2, even, or I could get within any, any um, small distance of 2. Uh, and, and that was what it means for that sum to be equal to 2. Now one important thing to notice here is that not all geometric progressions have uh, sums to infinity. So for example, if I took, instead of that one, um, a geometric progression like a 5, a 10, 20, 40, 80, etc. And I, so, it's got, so this one's got uh, a equals 5 and r equals 2. Um, then as I add these together, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger. So the sum just gets bigger and bigger. It's going to go, at, you know, you could say it's infinity. It's going to, the sum to infinity is huge because like the terms just get larger and larger. Um, so uh, a geometric progression only has an infinite sum when uh, r, the common ratio, is between 1 and minus 1 and not including uh, 1 and minus 1. So the, the like one we had before was a half, that one did have a sum, that's between minus 1 and 1. And the reason that is, that means that the size of the terms in the sequence gets smaller and smaller. So for example, let's say I took uh, a equals 2 and r equals 1 third. Then the first term is 2, the next one is 2 thirds, the next one is 2 ninths, the next one is 2 twenty sevenths. So, um, so, so these terms are getting getting smaller and smaller, and we end up with a, a sum that that converges. I should say it's not necessarily the case that just because terms in a sum get smaller that that means that the the series converges. We can find examples where that's uh, not the case. But for a geometrically decreasing sequence, um, they will get small small fast enough that they will converge to some nice limit. Um, now, notice it's minus 1 to 1, so uh, actually, you know, we've also got to think about the case, well, what about when r is negative? So if r is minus 1 third, that means that this sequence, okay, I do 2, and then I times it by minus a third, so it becomes minus 2 thirds, then plus 2 ninths, then minus 2 twenty sevenths. Um, so they're alternating in sign, but they're still, they're still getting smaller and smaller in size, and again, that will mean that the sequence converges. Whereas are one or bigger, that means the terms either stay the same or get bigger. So if I have infinitely many of them, um, they'll get too large. And, and similarly, if, if I had r like minus 2 or something, you know, let's say um, in this one r is minus 2, then that would go 2 minus 4, 8 minus 16, 32 minus 64. So again, these terms are getting huge, and the sum, when you add these together, um, it, we can see as like alternating between larger and larger uh, negative and positive numbers like 2 plus minus 4 that's minus 2 then plus 8 that's 6 minus 16 is minus 10 plus 32 is 22 minus 60 
4 gives us minus 42, so these numbers are alternating inside and getting bigger and bigger, they're not going to come to any nice uh, limit. So if we can, can, we'd like to find a formula for the infinite sum, and for finite sum it was a times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r, that was, if you like, the sum of the first n terms we called Sn. Now, what happens if I let n tend to infinity then? So, um, and remember, we're having this condition that minus 1 is less than r is less than 1. Well, if n gets larger and larger, uh, what's happened? We're saying what happens to this sum? Well, let's just think about what this would be here. So this this is where n appears, and r is a number between minus 1 and 1. So it might be something like 1 third. So the question is, what's 1 third to the n? As n gets really, really large, you know, getting... Um, you know, as, as big as I like, going to infinity, you know, so, well, any number between minus 1 and 1 raised to a very high power is very close to 0. So this term here, the r to the n, is basically 0. So for the infinite sum, we can say this sum to infinity is just a times 1 minus 0. So we'll just say it's a over 1 minus r. And that will be our formula for the infinite sum, so long as uh, the common ratio is between minus 1 and 1. So going back to our original example here, we had this sequence, a equals 1 and r equals a half. The sum to infinity, by this given by this formula, says well a is 1, r is 1 half, r is between minus 1 and 1, so, uh, so that's that condition satisfied. And this is then 1 uh, divided by 1 minus a half, so that's 1 divided by 1 half, which is 2, which is the same conclusion as we came to before. But of course this can this formula now could be used for any value of a and any value of r between minus 1 and 1. So let's say, for example, this sequence, 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, well I've got a is 1 and r now is 1 tenth again is between minus 1 and 1. So the infinite sum of this sequence is 1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.1, so that's 1 divided by 0 0.9, or 1 divided by 9 tenths, so that's 10 over 9, or 1 and 1 ninth. And I would argue that that is the correct answer not just because of this formula, but if you imagine adding together these numbers, what you'll get is 1 plus 0 0.1, so that's 1.1, 1 .1, plus 0 0.01, so that's 1.11, plus 0 0.001, so I'll get this, and you know that um, 0 0.1 recurring is 1 ninth, so this number here, 1 is 1 and 1 ninth, which is uh, 10 ninths, exactly the same conclusion as we've come to here. Fairly easy once you get the hang of it. Here's another GP, we've got a equals 3, and the common ratio here is minus 1 fifth, uh, because it's the multiplying by minus 1 fifth to go from each term to the next. So the sum to infinity is a, which is 3, over 1 minus, and now r is minus a fifth, so we put minus a fifth in here. So that's 3 divided by 1 plus 1 fifth, 3 divided by uh, 6 fifths, which is um, 15 over 6, or 5 over 2. This one will get closer and closer to 2.5 as we add more terms. So there we go, that's how to find the sum to infinity of a geometric progression.